Hi, I'm Doug Hayhoe and I've written a series of short video essays and podcasts on science, faith, and other topics. Most of the episodes relate to one of God's two books, Nature or Scripture, God's Creation or God's Written Word, the Bible. This one relates to God's second book, the Bible. It is called, Why Belong to a Church? There are many reasons for not attending a local church, but the time when you feel least like doing it may be the time when you need it the most especially if you find a church that reflects the biblical profile of a true community of faith. I had an interesting talk with Jim recently, my neighbor from one street over. We were out on our morning walks and our paths crossed as they often do. Usually we just greet each other with a few words, but this time was different. As our conversation developed, I asked Jim which church he attends. He mentioned that he was Roman Catholic. But I don't attend anymore, he said ever since I learned about the widespread abuse in the church. He then added, I'm still very much a Roman Catholic, however. I still agree with all their basic tenets. A week later, I ran into Greg in a medical clinic. He had grown up in a Christian family and had made a decision early in life to follow the Lord. This time, he asked me which church I attend. After I answered the question, I returned the favor. He looked at me a little sadly and replied, I feel lost right now. I don't have a church. It turned out that Greg and his wife were part of a large church where the senior pastor, a popular teacher and leader, had recently been accused of sexual abuse against a female staff under his authority. The church was now disintegrating. Exiting church has become endemic. Jeffrey Jones shares the results of a Gallup poll on what percent of people in the U.S. say they're a member of a church, synagogue, or mosque. The number stayed at 70% or slightly above for 60 years, from 1940 to 2000. In the following 20 years, however, it plunged from 70% down to 47%. Less than half of Americans belong to any church. Things in Canada are only slightly better. These are alarming statistics. Abuse by church leaders is only one of the reasons people leave church, although it may be one of the biggest right now. Others include the hypocrisy people see in the lives of other church members, the lack of community involvement by the church, or the loss of relevance of the church to the world we live in today. People also leave church burned out because of the focus on works and sick of the guilt and the to-do list. What they need is a church that focuses on our relationship with God and what he has done for us rather than what we have to do for him. A few years ago, a Christianity Today article called Exit Stage Left proposed a reason that had seldom been mentioned. People may be leaving the church because of the particular phase of life they're in. They made a decision to follow Christ, went through the steps of discipleship, and got busy in Christian service. But after some years, they arrived at a stage of inward reflection and questioning. They may have become worn out in serving and become disillusioned. Or perhaps they found it necessary to, quote, redefine their expressions of the faith and to some degree even their theology. They were now ready to, quote, check out. But it is at this moment in our journey, the article concludes, when we need the church most. Yes, the local church is very important for Christians. It's essential for our survival. It's also absolutely necessary for Christianity to be effective in our neighborhood, our city, in our country, and in the world. Even more than this, it's the place where God receives worship from his people. These things are only true, however, if the church functions as it is supposed to, according to God's word. Many years ago, I came across a series of five diagrams, perhaps written by Larry Richards, that illustrate how the church should function according to the New Testament. The diagrams are so simple and logical, I never forgot them. Furthermore, my years of involvement with the church never made them obsolete. The first diagram illustrates that the church is a community of believers. Round circle, a community of believers that share together. The circle represents, as I mentioned, that the church is a community. A community of believers who share together not only material things, but joys, triumphs, sadness, and tragedy, etc. This comes through very clearly in the first few chapters of the book of Acts in the Bible, when the first Christian church ever was formed. The believers, quote, had everything in common, Acts chapter 2, verse 44. They had become Christians because of God's love for them, and their responding faith in Christ. They now needed to share this new life with other believers. The first and most important thing they share, according to the New Testament, is love, 
Over and over again, they are told to love one another. See the end of John chapter 13. They are also told to accept one another, serve one another, share one another's burdens, pray for one another, and encourage one another. What a community this can make. It's like a close family. In fact, it's called the family of God. The older ones help the younger ones as they live together like brothers and sisters, a community of faith. The second diagram, with the arrow going up, illustrates that the church is a holy temple to worship. Here you see it on the right. The church is not just a horizontal fellowship, a warm club to belong to. The Bible also describes it as a holy temple where Christians offer up worship and prayers to God. You can see this at the end of Ephesians chapter 2. The first Christians devoted themselves to prayer and praise, it says in Acts chapter 2. As I said earlier, the arrow going up from the circle illustrates collective worship coming from the church. The God of the universe doesn't need our worship, but in his wisdom he knows that it elevates us to worship. Made in God's image, we are only truly fulfilled when we worship, in holiness and in love, the infinite personal God who made us. Now it's true that we can worship God by ourselves, out in nature, alone in a church building, or just in our own house. There are examples of this in the Bible, but it's also true that worship is primarily seen as a collective act in the Bible. One verse from the Psalms has always remained with me, quote, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord, Psalm 122 verse 1. Not that we have to worship in a physical temple as the Jews did, but we are happy, even excited at the thought of worshiping God together with others. Like the child who said to her stay at home parents, let's go to church. In the next diagram, there is also an arrow coming down to the church. This illustrates that the church is also a congregation or flock to be led by pastors, the Greek word for shepherds, who are guided by God. Here you see the arrow coming down for teaching and shepherding. The Bible often refers to people as sheep. Christians, like sheep, often lose their way and need to be cared for. The Apostle Peter refers to this church as a flock led by shepherds who guide and love them, 1 Peter 5. Thus, in the diagram I just showed, the arrow coming back down on the right illustrates pastors and leaders gifted by God to teach biblical truths and care for the local church. Leaders have a special responsibility to maintain their integrity. Some celebrity pastors have turned out to be secret abusers instead of being transparent leaders. The Apostle Paul exhorted Timothy to hold on to faith and to a good conscience, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19. Billy Graham often said that Christian leaders need to surround themselves with other believers gifted and ready to help them maintain personal integrity, as Billy Graham did himself. One of the striking images of the church in the Bible is that of a human body where each part has a function to do to benefit the whole. You see that particularly in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If even a small part of our body is hurt, a toe for example, the whole body suffers. Similarly, the church needs the healthy involvement of every true believer to function properly. Thus, the next diagram with the horizontal arrow represents the church as a group of members, each member of the church serving other members just as a human body. You can see that here. And so the dashed line coming down from the vertical arrow coming down is the leaders and the pastors helping the congregation to serve each other. The horizontal arrow inside the circle, as I just mentioned, illustrates each member serving others. As I mentioned also, the dotted vertical lines at the right represent the pastors and teachers preparing God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and knowledge of the Son of God. That's a big statement, but that's from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13. What a blessing when a church is like this. But the fifth and final important metaphor for the church is that of a city set on a high hill, as the Bible puts it. One time, while living in Colombia in South America, I was driving along a dark valley at night and suddenly saw the lights of the town in Serma on a high hill above. I remember Jesus' statement to his disciples, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. 
Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. In this last image, the church breaks out of its community into the wider neighborhood by acts of service and testimony on the part of each member. There you have the arrows, the horizontal arrows breaking out. As I mentioned, this illustrates the function of the church as a, a city high on a hill lit up. The Bible describes the first church this way, quote, they enjoyed the favor of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Acts 2, chapter 40, verse 47. This will be the result of a church that is functioning as it should and you'll want to be part of it. To summarize, the church is first an active community of believers caring for and helping each other. Second, it is a holy temple offering up worship to God for their own blessing. Third, it is a congregation or flock of people taught biblical truths and cared for by pastors and teachers who are maintaining their own personal integrity. Fourth, it is a body where each member has an important part to play building up the rest of the body. Fifth, the church is a city on a high hill giving light to people all around, or at least it should be. Here are the five symbols all together. So you can see once you draw it yourself, you'll never forget this. It's very instructive. Here's the final note. As I revised this paper, which I initially wrote 30 years ago, I realized how far short I have come as a member and elder of several local churches. Who am I to teach these truths when I am only too conscious of my own limitations? Indeed, the New Testament warns us teachers of this very danger. Quote, Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. That's in James chapter 3. Nevertheless, this model of the church has been so crucial in helping me participate in the churches I belong to that I wanted to share it with others. I especially want to invite those not associated with any local church to consider if it isn't just what you need at this moment. Thank you for listening.